today I'd like us to focus on the difference between experience and our interpretation of experience. I spend a lot of my time uh, working with groups and individuals in what I call living the Dharma in daily life. And I have found this teaching, this understanding, to be useful to so many people. Experience is simply what's true, what's happening to us. So you're there at the office and someone is complaining about your work and it's either fair or unfair complaint. You're either willing to receive it or not receive it as being true. You have a, a, a surround of people listening or not listening to you. You're having a whole experience. That's what is. Interpretation is then how you tell yourself a story about that experience. Your interpretation is, oh, I'm always picked on, or I'm, I'm a worthless person at work. This always happens to me because I don't do good work. You make a whole story. You move away from the experience to a, some sort of a, an overview interpretation that's got all of these memories and associations in it that are so often uh, not helpful and in fact cause a lot of suffering and also lead to a lot of unskillful actions. So very important, this difference. Experience is what's happening when you stay within the very moment itself. So there you are at work, you're being criticized. Wow, being criticized feels like this. Oh, look at how my body's responding to this. Oh, look at my mind. Oh, it's, it's feeling so much uncertainty. Oh, look at this anger because this is not fair criticism. Now take the same thing if you're being praised at work. Your mind can go, okay, I'm being praised at work. So here I am, this is being praised. It feels good to be praised. And then you're having a feeling in the body of being praised for your work. You, you're feeling recognized. There's a, there's a sense of satisfaction of being recognized and so forth. But then you can also go into the interpretation around being praised at work, like, yeah, it's about time. Or, yeah, you know, they, I, they don't really realize just how good I am. Or I want more of this. You've left the experience in either way. Staying in the experience, I refer to as staying within, and then getting outside the experience is what is interpretation. You're no longer with the primary experience. You've gone to a secondary experience, which is your view and opinion about what's happening. Boy, do we love our views and opinions about what's happening. It's just incessant over and over again. So we, we watch someone else's driving and we interpret their behavior in driving. They're a bad driver, you know, or they're a good driver, or they're insensitive to you, or they're reckless and all of this. And so often, of course, we have no idea what's really happening with that person. Uh, you have, uh, if you like driving fast and you get behind a person who's really slow, you can have all of these judgments about that person. But in fact, what's happening in this moment is you're going slow in your car. But instead, you leave that and you go to this, this person's just inconsiderate. Oh, they're such a bad driver. And then you get behind, you get up beside them and you realize, oh, this person is quite elderly and they in fact should be going slow. I'm actually glad they're going slow. So what happened to that initial interpretation that was just based on whether it was pleasant or unpleasant? And this happens to us over and over again. We jump to the interpretation because the, the experience itself is pleasant or unpleasant. And rather than just be with the pleasant or unpleasant as an end in itself, we go to the interpretation in order to be able to control the moment. Our ego wants to control the moment, and it controls it through the interpretation. And therefore, it starts to selectively notice in that moment. So someone may have frowned at you as they, you were walking down the hall, and you go, why are they mad at me? You don't even pause for a second to go, oh, is something wrong with them? Or was that really a frown? You're totally consumed in your story about, oh, they're mad at me. This happens so often to so many people. So how do we come back? Just come back to this moment. 
we do it through mindfulness, through staying present with what's true in the body, what's true in our heart, and what's true in our head center. We just stay present with it, and we're interested in it. Now, it doesn't mean that we should never interpret because there's signals that are, we're receiving, but we way over-interpret, and many times our interpreting actually gets in the way of the signal. We so jump to our habitual kinds of interpretation that we don't really stay present long enough to get the signal to receive the message. So a few things that you can do to help with this. One is you can cultivate staying present in the body. Two, you can notice when you've gone to interpretation. Three, you can ask yourself, well, what am I believing right now? And in what way is this serving me to believe it? So that's number four. Three, what am I believing? Four, in what way is this serving me to believe this right now? And five, ask yourself, well, what else might be true now? And then six, come back to the experience itself and say, I choose to be in this experience. And then later, number seven would be say, oh, so is there some signal in this for me? Is there some message? So in certain circumstances, this can be happening bang, 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 because there you are and you see a car acting where the, the, there's erratic behavior and the car may be swerving in and out of your lane. You don't go, oh, I wonder what's okay with this person. How am I reacting? You have to respond right then. But so often in your life, there's not this immediacy of needing to interpret to say what's the message here. So often the, the actual skillful action is to just stay present with the experience. When we stay present with the experience, we're alive to the experience. We're getting the fullness of the experience. When you fall into the interpretation, you're no longer in the moment, so you're giving up a moment of your life for one more view and opinion. Is that really a good swap off? You have to decide that for yourself. Also, when we are present in the moment in this way, when we're fully present in this way, we have far more choices. The interpretation, jumping to the interpretation, narrows, limits our choice. So, when you stop watching this, stay in your experience.